Hello everyone, this is Dr. Strong, and I just wanted to run through what we use in the Strong Health Institute to assess cortisol levels and DHEA levels. This is the starting point that we use for most of our patients in order just to kind of find out what's going on with their symptoms and their overall health and kind of where they stand. So basically what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna show you my own adrenal cortex stress profile. This is from Genova Diagnostics. And the reason I really like this test is because Genova is a very reputable company. And I have noticed that when I go through Genova, I get better results than I do through a traditional lab company. And so the reason I use them is just to ensure that I get high quality results. Now basically, the reason I wanna do this is I'm doing it one for educational purposes for future patients and then also doing it for my current patients. Now as you can see here, this is my own salivary cortisol. So there's no HIPAA breach because I'm giving myself permission to talk about myself. And as you can see here, this is called a salivary cortisol test. What you do is you spit in a tube four times a day during certain specific time frames, as you can see, that are located at the bottom of the graph here. So between 7 and 9 a.m., 11 and 1, 3 and 5, and then 10 and 12. And what we do here is uh, Genova takes those samples and they measure your cortisol levels in your spit. So you don't have to do any blood work. It's, it's great. It's fascinating. And then they can tell what your cortisol levels are in these specific periods throughout the day. And they measure kind of how your cortisol levels are doing. And then they also can measure your salivary uh, DHEA, which is a sex hormone that gets converted into your sex hormones. Um, so it's responsible for making your estrogens and your testosterones. So if that's on the low side, then you're probably not making enough of your steroidal hormones that are so beneficial to having proper function. So you get increased weight gain, low libido, you get lethargic, you get brain fog, all these sorts of issues. So there is, I have another video that explains the whole model of how this works uh, and how we treat patients in our clinic and why we get such good results. But for this one, I just want to go through the basic understanding of this lab interpretation. So as you can see here, I am a little stressed, okay? And the reason I do this is so that I can identify and I can start bringing these levels back down, either with supplements or lifestyle changes, whether it's diet, improving my sleep quality, uh, doing a little bit of stress reduction, taking more time for myself, not working as hard. So there are definitely very um, cheap lifestyle factors that you can play into this. And you can use also use supplements to expedite the process, which we do in my clinic. So as you can see, when I wake up in the morning, my cortisol levels are around this 0.3 marker. And then from here, you can see that the normal reference range is that 0.097 to the 0.337. And what that means is that when I wake up in the morning, my cortisol levels are a little bit elevated already. And basically, that means that I'm waking up in kind of already a sympathetic state or a fight or a flight state and that I need to probably work on getting a little bit more restful sleep, maybe not eating so early before I go to bed, probably like within two hours of uh, eating, I need to go ahead and stop. And then as you can see throughout the morning, this is probably maybe I'm drinking a little bit too much coffee, coffee or caffeine causes you to secrete cortisol. So maybe I need to reduce my cups of coffee or my caffeine intake in the morning. And then just throughout the day, my cortisol levels aren't dropping like they should. Now, is that due to job or lifestyle or other factors? Possibly so. But what this does, it looks at pretty much your normal rhythm. So this is your normal rhythm over a period of time. And this needs to come down and drop off a little bit more. Now, obviously, I'm not in a disease or pathological state. But basically what this means is that I've just got a little bit more stress and that I need to 
practice some some different techniques or kind of use a little bit of supplementation to fuel my body a little bit differently to bring these pattern patterns down and most of the time we do these with like DHEA DHEA will bring it down uh, pregnenolone alone will bring it down magnesium vitamin C and B vitamins those are typically the supplements that we we use to support the adrenals and make sure that they're functioning optimally so while we measure DHEA, DHEA uh, normally it brings down your cortisol levels. And as you can see here, my DHEA is really good. So there's really not, um, I'm not deficient or anything like that. You'll typically see that in some patients um, that are just super stressed out and then they're having to utilize all their DHEA. Um, it's getting converted to, to the cortisol pathway. Now, you can see here that my DHEA cortisol ratio is on the lower side, and that just means that basically for my cortisol levels throughout the day, I don't have enough DHEA to bring that down. So what I would do for myself is supplement DHEA, especially during this like 11 to 1 p.m., this 3 to 5 p.m., and probably some before I go to bed to bring these down a little bit more in this green area. And this is more, so there are three stages to adrenal fatigue. There's the alarm phase, which is kind of the first stage where you're either going to fight the tiger or you're going to run away from it. So that's kind of like the stage that I'm going in. And that's mainly what you want to do as a preventative measure to make sure that you don't end up in the later stages, which we're going to talk about in just a second. So catching them in this early stage just means that you can prevent you know, headaches or weight gain or chronic fatigue or brain fog or any of these other symptoms that are really common in our uh, society today. So just catching it before it becomes an issue. So this is kind of a classic stage one uh, adrenal fatigue-ish issue. And then the stage two is a, a resistance stage is what they have named it. And what that looks like is your your cortisol levels will look fairly normal, but your DHEA will just be crashing. And what that is due to is like you're been kind of going pretty hard for a long time. And then what you're doing is you're utilizing all your resources. And instead of converting them to sex hormones, you're converting them to cortisol and able to compensate for all the amount of stress that you're taking on. So that one's a little bit harder to diagnose, but we typically see it with these lower DHEA levels and we just come in, same thing, except we're probably gonna do a little bit higher doses of DHEA, still gonna support you with B vitamins and pregnenolone. And then the last one, the last stage is called the um, adrenal exhaustion phase. And that's when you're crashing and you don't have any cortisol whatsoever. Because basically what happens in this stage, if you, is that you've utilized all of your resources and you don't have anything left to make cortisol. And what does that mean? Well, you definitely don't have anything to make your sex hormones because cortisol takes precedence over those sex hormones. So what we have to do there is basically just reboot and really support uh, your lifestyle, making sure you're getting enough rest, that you're not overworking, sleep patterns are appropriate. And then you know the supplementation for that looks a little bit different as well. So depending on kind of where you are in, in those stages, we supplement you a little bit differently to cater it to your specific needs. So it's not just a one size fits all, here take this supplement and you're better. No, there's a timing issue with it as well as you can see with the cortisol rhythm here. And then also there's a dosage um, protocol as well that goes with this. So. And if we just look here, this is kind of why I like Genova. They give you a really good comp uh, commentary over everything. So, you know, your diurnal cortisol rhythms, the time cortisol measurements, the DHEA, the DHE cortisol ratio, what all of this means. And I'm not going to read this uh, to you all, but you just can kind of see how uh, prevalent they are and how specific they are with these. Now, just something I want to go over that why I like this as well. Now, Genova, the reference range, they're comparing you to 
people within your age range. So they're not comparing me who is a 30 year old male to somebody that is a 45 year old female and maybe going through menopausal because our cortisol patterns are gonna to look totally different. So what they do is they take you and they compare you to your age group and the normal of that age group. So that looks differently for based on sex, based on the different age range that you're in. So that's why I really like them too because they give you a lot better data than any of the other labs out there. And then basically they just give you references where they get all this uh, information from. So if you wanna go check it out, now this is more like research based, uh, but it is a pretty good um, resource section if you need it. So I hope that you all found this uh, video helpful and if you have any questions don't hesitate to reach out to me if you want to you can check out my book on blood work it doesn't go specifically over this but it goes over your basic blood work that you can look at as a reference range and if you have any questions don't hesitate to contact me at uh, the strong health institute and you can send me a message on facebook wherever you can find me all right everybody have a great day Bye bye